The planet is restless, Captain. They want their podcast. And they shall have it. I'll beam down to the surface. You have the bridge. Captain, that is illogical. These are Trek fans. They will challenge and dissect your knowledge with great emotion. It is a mission fraught with danger, peril, and grave risk. Suggestions. Send in the red shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for another red shirts. And let me just say before we get started, we're down one crew member. Uh, Mr. Craig J, he is off on an away mission. Something about getting hooked up to a spore drive, something, I don't know. But um, <laughs> They're testing some sort of new space travel. It's supposed to be wonderful. So it's just me, the captain, Captain Q, and my, well, by default, he's my number one officer today. That would be hey. Big Sexy. <laughs> big Sexy, how are you today? You know, I'm doing well. I uh, got to do a little bit of home theater tech repair later on my uh my dts receiver is about to give up the ghost and apparently i haven't done this in a while because there's new uh surround modes called dts x and yes. dolby atmos wow and i haven't bought a receiver in 10 years so i'm gonna go out today and look around and see what i like but it's time to time to upgrade a little bit you know what it's funny you say that i have a onkyo receiver that i've had for I don't know. I moved to Pennsylvania in 2009, so probably around 10 years. And I also have one of those, um, the brand name is called, I think it's called Universal Remote. And it's one of these freaking ridiculously expensive remotes that allows you to use, I'm going to say, radio as opposed to infrared. So that our components are down in the basement, so we don't, oh, have, to, cool. we don't have everything cluttered. I, I don't recommend that because, you know, I got to get up and... Go downstairs to change my DVDs every time I want to put watch something. Oh, that's but okay. uh, it, it's it's cool conversation piece. That's about it. But lately, I've noticed that it takes like a good two minutes for me whenever I turn on the TV. It takes a good two minutes for um, the receiver to um, to emit a picture. And I'm trying really? To what, what the hell's going on there? I noticed this just maybe three or four months ago. So. I'm going to have to drop probably major grip on um, calling a, a professional company to come out and tweak it. So, Ah, mm-hmm. first world problems. What can you say? <laughs> Listen, let me ask you before we get started. Can you think of, this is just general trivia. Can you think of any Star Trek episode where the captain or the the ranking commander on the bridge was functioning in his or her duties while sick? Sick as in like a cold or sick as in like a serious, you know, virus or, um, you know, like just, just something like threatening, just like a, just had a cold or something like that. I'm trying uh, to think, I'm, didn't Janeway have issues at one point? Well, something that simple? No, I don't believe so. I mean, there's been times where she has been threatened to, uh, you know, p- be pulled off the bridge due to medical issues because the doctor went to do it. And I can't think of her having a cold and just sitting in the uh, ready room of sick to go over the ship. <laughs> That's had to have happened in 50 years. And I only bring that up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because I am fighting back something. I mean, I've I still got my strength, but, um, boy, i got a scratchy throat right about now. My head is congested. What is that? I mean, you know, you, you I, I know you can serve as doctor, too, so ship's doctor. So what, what would you, what's my diagnosis, uh, Dr. Sexy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that didn't come. That didn't come out right. Why? Why you? <laughs> I would say the best way to go about it is uh, things that have worked over the years. You know, orange juice, uh, a couple of Sudafed, and just knock that thing out. Maybe uh, an expectorant like a Mucidex if you're having a lot of, uh, you know, congestion congestion issues. But you no, know, those normal things can have, get this done. Well, we've hit a new low. We're talking about Mucinex and expectorates. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so what are we talking about today? I think today we're going to have a little bit of um we're going to have like a, a knockdown drag out fight between two contenders. We're talking about uh who is more <laughs> I can't believe we're saying this. Who is <laughs> who's more annoying? Jake Sisko or Wesley Crusher? Now, I will say send all your mail <laughs> 
too <laughs> too big sexy because this is something that he's wanted to get off his chest for quite some time. Uh, I know he hates one of these two guys. I'm not going to reveal who just yet, but let's let's get into it. Let's get in. now. First off, we chose Wesley Crusher and Jake Sisko. Are there any other young adult, maybe millennial type of characters that exist in Star Trek? Well, you could say Naomi Wildman from um, Voyager, Ichab. but she was a Ichab. Oh, Ichab. Oh, 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 he's on the list too. Wow. Naomi Wildman was was a very young child, so I can't really you know get on her. But Ichab, oh man, I hated him. What was up with it? What sort of hate about Ichab? I didn't like you know. Not it's not, not it's not necessarily him, but it's the writers went to that old trope of okay. Ratings are down. Stick a young person in there. Bill Cosby. I know it's a bad issue wow. now. Bill Cosby, when they brought in Raven Simone, Brady Bunch, Cousin Oliver. You know, no. They didn't need to do that. Well, but they brought in Na- Naomi Wildman way before each of and I thought Naomi was a nice addition. She I mean, was Naomi was actually born on the ship, which made sense. They yeah. just grabbed each out of, you know, oh, he's on a planet. Let's take him. Get out of here. Well, they, you know, they want it's 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 not out of the realm of conceivability that they would run into some people who may have who may be um, what's the word I'm looking for rehabilitated from the Borg assimilation. Yeah, yeah. And 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 each have, I thought each have did a great job of helping to add a new dimension to um, Seven's character. But I thought that was happening when she started to explore interpersonal relationships. First, Harry tried. to Tried to get up on that and struck out. No, nah, Harry didn't have a shot. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, now his his boy his boy Tom should have told him, "Look, man, player. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> That's out of your Slayer league, fam. Player. That's out of your league, fam. Uh, uh-uh. uh. You're not ready for some player. And then uh, Chicote, you know, seemed to get that thing popping right at the end of the end of the show. So I did like that. I hated you know, but that. I I, I hated really. It. There was no motivation for Chicote and Seven to all of a sudden fall in love. What is Chicote seeing? Well, I mean, I know what any oh. man sees in Seven. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna try to wife her? I mean, come on. I look. I'm not saying he's trying to wife her, but I'm saying he's trying to get up in that, you know. And whatever happens, happens, you know, down the line. But he was definitely like, let me see the Borg girl out of, out of all the uh, Borg technology. Okay, she's fine. Let's work this out. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to decide, should I, in, in today's climate, yeah, no. <laughs> should I bleep out, get up in that? <laughs> let me, let me, <laughs> trying to catch her attention for hopefully more than a platonic uh, conversation. How's that? That's, that's, that's much nicer. Uh, I, yes. I thought you were going to say slap skins or something. <laughs> anyway. No, let me um, know slap skins. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, it, it's very clear that there's two men piloting this starship right now. All right, but let's get back to... Well, we, we, wait, wait, I want to throw an honor, honorable mention, too. I just thought of this. Uh, let me guess, Charlie X. Oh, I hated him, too. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He, but he was only in the one episode, so he really gets in and gets dealt with at the end of the episode anyway, so I can't really burn him. Right. But I can burn Alexander Rozhenko. I hate Oh. Him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're talking about Wharf son, right? I'm talking Little Wharf, yes. Wow, yeah. Uh, wh- you know what? Now, are you talking about the um, the TNG version or the DS9 version? Well, the DS9 version was more of a young adult and just goofy. But the TNG version, you know, at first, when I first introduced him, I thought it was, you know, something interesting. But when they brought him to the ship and he first come, and he comes on the ship, starts lying and starts stealing shit, really? Come on that, now. You're talking about Little. you're talking about Brian Bonsall. Uh, yes. From Family Ties. Yes. Go ahead, okay. say it, Q. Go ahead, say it. What? I'm waiting for it. What? <laughs> I think you a black actor, a white son. Go ahead. <laughs> nah. Like you put the brown makeup on, it's all good. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I, you know what? It's funny. You, I, I thought of that character in DS9. Oh my God! I mean, dude was such a loser. Yes, yes. And the Klingons were serving him every day. Remember that? I don't know. I don't know DS9 enough to be able to, to point to episode titles. I mean, TNG is the show that I can rattle them off. But 
I, there was an episode of DS9. This is the last. I don't know if this was his last time. I'm still watching DS9, but he was serving on a Klingon ship with Worf, and it was so painful to watch. You know, because I have a son. I'm like, damn. I mean, you just want to pick him up and smack him around a little bit. Like, get your head out of your ass, dude. What? But, but you see, the main problem with Alexander from a father-son standpoint is what? Absentee father. Wow. Damn, Big Sexy. Wow. <laughs> tell, me, tell me I'm wrong. Well. Had he been with Worf daily, he wouldn't be such a dork. And what was the reason Worf wasn't with him? Because he was serving or what? First, Worf was serving. He didn't know he was his, first of all, until uh, I think her name was Kaylear. Kaylear, right. 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 Yeah, I met her at a con. She's fine in person. Um, she looks attractive, yeah. Oh, she, tall too. Ooh. He didn't know that that was his his guy until she told him, and then he sent the little dude to go live with his parents. No, nah, man, you're ducking responsibility. And then you know his mom came out and said, you know, Worf, he's at that age, man. You need to step up. And so he brought so she brought him back to the ship, and I'm guessing he was on the entire time until Worf left for a DS line. But still, if he even if he was, he should have gone with him to DS9. You take your kid with you, man. You just can't bail on him. Kind of like Jake did, right? Exactly. Well, I, you know, Worf, I've, I see Worf as an honorable character. So I just don't I rem- do, except for this one, one issue. Well, I, that's what I was getting to. I don't remember the episode well enough, but I'm sure he had a good reason. Maybe, because he sent, he sent um, Alexander, well, first of all, that name... <laughs> Yeah. Well, his parents I... named him, so he didn't name him. His oh, his uh, Worf's Worf step parents named him. I think Worf's parents named him because Brozhenko's is their last name. Right. Well, that's the L right there. Yeah. Oh well, I guess well, like you said, Worf didn't know, right? But the minute he found out, she said, "You know what? You are my son. Your name is uh, Moog Part Two or something." <laughs> and said, so, "Look, you are a Klingon. Let's go handle this." I like to think that he was, you know, listen, he was serving on the flagship of the Enterprise. And to, to have this revelation thrown in his lap, he's like, look, I, I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, so I have to think in the best interests of, of uh, Alexander, and he should be raised by his grandparents. When is it the best interest of any child not to be with their parents? But wait, wait, let me rephrase that. Assuming the parent doesn't have, you know, personal issues, you know, we'll need to get into. Well, I'm, maybe, sir, maybe the duties of a Starfleet officer are part of that, part of those issues. Benjamin Sisko, who was a commander, lost his wife, still took up, you know, out a post on the furthest reaches of civilization and took his son with him. You do not break up the family unit. He that's where he needed to be with his dad. Well, here we go. And so now my next question, which leads segues perfectly into our topic, is are you happy with how Jake turned out? We're gonna explore that right now. So <laughs> <coughs> So let's get into it. Uh Wesley versus Jake. Now, first of all, I wanted to point out that and let me just say, while I, I know a little bit more about Wesley uh, and I, I like the character. I just, you know, his episodes, you know, when you got Picard and Worf and all the his his episodes, you know, I didn't I didn't retain them as well as I would other more popular characters. But I think I know enough to be dangerous about him. So you got Wesley, you got Jake. And, and the thing I'd like to point out, and I know very little about Jake because I've only seen DS9 each episode one time. But they have a lot of striking similarities. First off, they both are absent a parent and the the other thing i gotta call picard out on this they're both absent a parent based on his involvement Ooh. picard you my man but i gotta call you out on that dude come on man yeah <laughs> you know you're wrong on that no uh uh what's her name beverly crusher where's yeah. jack where's jack okay he's got to own that one 
Okay, Picard's kind of own own Jack. I mean, he died on, in the in the line of duty, but it was under Picard's hand as captain. And uh, Picard, you know, whether or not he was under the influence of the Borg or not, Jake doesn't have a mom because of Picard. You know, and Picard has to take a little side L as well, because since Jack did, you know, perish under his command, for him to be sniffing around Beverly, come on, Picard. No, that, well, well, no. How long has it been since Jack died? Doesn't matter, man. The, she's off limits. Somebody dies on your watch, and you go sniff around the wife after a few years. Come on, man. It's a bad well, luck. Well, now listen. I just watched over Thanksgiving holiday. They had a marathon, Star Trek marathon on BBC America, and I watched the episode Attached, where you remember this episode where Beverly and. Uh, yes, yes. The, the car get kidnapped by the Kess, one either the Kess or the Prit. I Kess and the Prit. Right. Yes, and um, they they're able to sense each other's thoughts, and Beverly uh, senses that Picard, at one time, well, he still loves her, but he keeps it at bay. She doesn't seem too mad at him, <laughs> although yeah, no, although. Didn't. She did shut my man down at the end of that episode. They're in his ready room or in his chambers. Oh, right. They're having breakfast. They do the breakfast thing. And Picard's like, Picard tries to Mac. He says, um, well, if you are aware of my feelings and you're not upset by them, should we explore this? She basically said no. <laughs> damn. I'm like, damn. Uh, well, I, mean, I respect her. She said no because... It, what did she say? I, I think she said something like it wouldn't look good in front of the crew or something like that. And, and you know what, Picard, as much as I, I support you, that's what you get for exerting sexual harassment over uh, your girl, uh, Darren, Commander Darren from, um, I forget the name of the, 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 the title of the episode, but we talked about this before where um, he, he falls in love with a commander. Yep. And he has her reassigned because she almost gets killed, and he says, I can't handle that. I don't like her anyway, so I'm okay with that. Oh, I like her <laughs> a lot. Anyway, um, so yeah, the, uh, Wesley and Jake share that in common, and they're both, quote-unquote, serving, or let's say living, uh, in the same environment as their sole parent. So I find that interesting. One other thing I noticed, and, and maybe it might speak to who is less annoying... You know, unlike Wesley, Jake managed to maintain a lot of relationships on DS9. Whereas I don't recall Wesley, maybe Data, B Data and Jordy, but only... Yeah, in... but he, he pissed Jordy off near the end, though. He, he came back with, with a funky attitude. R refresh my memory. What, what did he... What on, on Journey's End, when he came back for okay, like... Well, well, to, 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 go, go, oh. go into Journey's End. Give, us, give the audience a little bit of... Um, Okay. On that. Yeah. At Journey's End, you know, Wesley is in the academy, and right. it's his senior year, and he had like a, I don't want to say shore leave, but he had a little vacation, comes back to the Enterprise in his little outfit, his little cadet outfit, and at one point, Jordy's like, hey, we did some things in engineering, let's take a look at it. So he shows it to him, and Wesley was being just a dismissive douche. He's all, well, you know, over at, you know, Utopia Police Show, they've already done this 18 times over and blah, blah, blah. And Jordy's like, hey, man, we're out here in the middle of nowhere, and we came up with this on the fly. This is pretty good. Well, I guess so. <laughs> you make, are, and, are, you, are you elaborating now? No, no. And at one point, Jordy's like, you know what? You can take that funky attitude and, and step off. And he, and he put him out. Okay. And now... And now th He's a dick, man. Wow. This is... <laughs> Journey's in. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the episode where Wesley kind of turns against uh, the Enterprise, where there's some Native Americans that have settled there yes. inside of Cardassian yes. space? Yeah, and and then um, that they're, they're trying to they're trying to move the the settlers without them knowing or something. And they're trying to they have a planet that was in dispute, and then the Cardassians and the Federation came to an agreement giving that planet to the Cardassians, so around the planet, y'all got to go. And the people on the planet who were the basis for the Maquis, actually, said, we ain't going nowhere. And Federation's like, well, we can't protect you, so we got to move you. Wesley steps in because the Federation is about to move them 
I don't say forcibly, but they're about to move them a little, give them a little push. Wesley jumps in, don't let him move you. Oh, yeah. Don't let him do this. Punk. He didn't say it like that. I do, I do remember that. <laughs> Punk. And I, I, you know, the thing about it, he got, he did get Worf. I remember Worf was on the ground at the time. And he put Worf in the jackpot. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But okay, now listen. Now, let me ask you this: Did the end justify the means? Can you see it from the perspective of the settlers at all? I can see it from the perspective of the settlers, but it is their it's their place to do or not do anything. You know, Wesley just comes in, hasn't even been on the ship. You know, as a member, just walks in. Hey, what's happening here? I'm buttoning in. And on top of that, Wesley had that weirdly inappropriate relationship with the time traveler dude. The I wasn't with that at all. Remember him? Yeah. <laughs> he made two appearances in the series. Both, he's fiending on Wesley. Like, hey, man, look, hey. He made more than two, didn't he? Two. Well, the other one must have been must have been Remember Me. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right, three. Three. Okay, okay. Because the first one was like the second season where they're doing the warp um, experimentation. And Wesley's like, you know what? These warp engines shouldn't be working like this. Oh, and of course, Wesley sees this. No one else. And the traveler guy saw, well, come hang with me, Wesley, and I'll show you how we do it. And all of a sudden, Ew. it turns out. Ew. T- thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and it turns out that Wesley and this guy have a, let's just say, friendship. And then Wesley sees that the traveler using his abilities is starting to tax him. And he's all, Captain, it's hurting him. Hey, man. You, you and your man need to take take it somewhere else. All right. Come on. Right. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Not that wrong with that. But he was an underage kid, and this guy's all fiending on him, man. And, you make it and sound on top like... of it, the, the travel's like a borderline stalker. He keeps coming out of nowhere. Hi, Wesley, I'm back. I'm watching you the whole time. Hey, man. You make it sound like this is a they're members of Nambla or something. <laughs> I mean, it's not... I mean... Um, the Traveler was kind of like, I mean, I, I imagine this is what the writers were thinking. That the Traveler was kind of like a father figure for Wesley. Because the, the, the Traveler, didn't he determine that Wesley had some almost meta-human abilities? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say father figure at all. No? No. If anything, it was more like, um, I wouldn't say father figure because they didn't have that type of formality. You know, Wesley never looked up at him as that person. It was more like, you know, I, just, I hate to, I'm not trying to imply anything, but it was more like a special friendship. What do you, what do you mean by special? This is called. See, there you go. There you, you go. I, I'm try, I just want a definition, counselor. I mean, <laughs> like when, when a younger person, let's just say mentor, mentor protege relationship, I, I would go with that. Because well, he's mean, like, teaching him about his skills and things he doesn't know and hasn't been taught, but I don't think he, he was a father type figure, no. Well, isn't that what a mentor kind of is, or a role model? A male role model? No, no, not necessarily, because a mentor is more in, in teaching, you know, about a certain thing, not not necessarily about life itself. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to say this. I know there's a lot of hate out there for Wesley Crusher, and I got to tell you, I don't get it, because, yeah, you, po- you pointed out some stuff that he's done that was like, dude, what, what are you thinking? You know, but all the characters, even Picard, have gone through those moments. Now, here's what I'm going to say positive about Wesley Crusher. First off, he's a genius. He's a, He has super, super natural abil- abilities. When he, uh, he did kind of cause the problem, the uh, warp bubble. This is Remember Me, one of my favorite yeah. episodes. Yeah, but yeah, he, he did. Was, he was able to solve the problem. He's the young. He's probably one of the youngest uh, members of a Starfleet crew. That's how advanced he was. Captain Picard gave him a field. What do you call it? A field promotion to Which ensign. Was bullshit. Why? Oh, and it, oh, I'm going to give you a promotion to acting uh, ensign. Man, get out of here, man. And hey. again, if I'm on the ship. And I'm a regular ensign who worked my way up through Starfleet, and I see Picard just trying to soup this kid up. Oh, he's an ensign, so this kid's my rank without going through Starfleet? Nah, that's bullshit. You know what that, know what that is? That, that's Picard saying, hey, you, that's life. Learn to deal with it. It's going to get worse. <laughs> I'm going to get worse. Send me to the, to the you know, Excelsior or Defiant. I'm out. Hey, let me ask you this. Who You're was... Who, who? What? 
I'd have, I'd have fired on Picard with that shit. We'd have had it out. Wow. You give have... me the same opportunity you give Wesley weed, and I'm not saying anything. But he got special treatment, and we all know it. Well, that's it's good to be the captain. That's all I can say. Let me ask you this. Who was at the helm running shop when they were facing the Borg in Best of Both Worlds? That was Wesley. Who was uh, it? Remember, no. What was, what was it? Wesley was at the helm. Oh, he's at the helm. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah. he was at the helm. What do you think I said? I thought you meant run the, the entire ship. I'm sorry. No, oh, no, Wesley no, no, was no, there. No, no. no he, nah, he's but not. Then again, it was, and again, Wesley's at the helm. And I'm, if I'm a helmsman who's been trained, gone through the whole nine, I'm like, I can't get a shot? Really? That's how it goes, man. Man, that's bullshit. <laughs> I, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> you know why? Because I was thinking of the other helmsman when I was watching this marathon. This fine sister. Oh, my God. You know. <laughs> I can't remember her name. You mean the girl from the Cosby show? No, she was only in one episode. And she was kind of she was lame too. Oh, Damn. she's she's fine too. But no, this was um she she was a recurring helmsman. She had a really a really harsh bob cut haircut. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway. And again, yeah. there you go. She has gone through the whole deal. Where was she? Maybe she was on shore leave. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I hate I, I hate him. I hate Crusher. But you haven't given. I don't think. I, I just, you know what? I'm gonna t- I'll tell you why. Okay. And again, I will own this as my own personal hang-up. Your own beef. My own beef. Ever since I was a youngster, I have always hated, A, like I said earlier, when a, when a show brings in a new young character just to spike ratings, which is why I hated Cousin Oliver, Oliver and I hated Raven Simone. Yeah, I said it. Now, on top of that, I also hated... The team sidekick. So I hated Wendy and f- Marvin. You have to edit that out. I hated the Wonder Twins. You know, I hated the Teen Titans when, in their original cartoon. I don't like that. That's why I hate the Young Avengers. That's why I hate the Runaways. Wow. Now, but- bring in Wesley Crusher, Wesley Crusher, who doesn't earn it. They just let him run around the ship. I'm going to do all this. I'm going to take Data apart. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? Did Wesley, take, was Wesley took Data apart at one point? He didn't take him apart, but he figured out, you know, the difference between Data and Lord, learn how to turn him on and off. That off makes him weird. a that makes him a valuable member of the crew. <laughs> he's not a member of the crew. That's just it. He's not a member of the crew. If he's an ensign, he is a young if he's an ensign, he's an he's... acting ensign. What's the difference? How about you know six months as a crewman cleaning out waste extraction? Earn your stripes, man. Well, I think that's what he ended up doing after a nemesis. He was well, on the night crew or something. Yeah, he needed that, too. Because I remember after um, the episode, I forget the name of it, where he's in the Academy, and him and the actor who went on to be Tom Paris right. were doing some hot dogging. Right. Somebody ends up dead, and it cost him a whole year of of uh, credits, which is good, but it wasn't enough. They should have expelled him. Wait a minute. Now, see, you're making my point. Wesley stood up and took his lumps. He was a man. He 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 stood up like a man. And no, he's, he didn't. He Tom did. Paris stood up. No, no, no. He said, stood up. From what I remember, he said he was going to go to Top Brass and, and admit the truth. After Picard and Jordy figured it out, they're like, nah, this story's bullshit. Well, let's look this up. <laughs> and they figured it out, and Picard confronted him. He's like, what's up with here, man? Well, well, Captain, uh uh-uh. uh, Ensign, what happened here? Well, we were fucking around and this is what happened. All right, what are you going to do about it? Either you're going to rat or I'm going to do it for you. Okay, I'll do it. And then he went to Tom Paris. Paris is like, no, no, this is about the team. Right when Wesley was about to admit it, Tom Paris, I'm just calling him that, that's not Tom Paris, but the same actor, he stood up and said, you know, I did this. I did this. It's not on the team. He took credit for it and took blame for it well so what you're saying he took blame for his actions i'm just saying wesley the was the one action. wesley was the one who said we need to fess up no picard was the one who said y'all need to fess up well you know I, you didn't i don't i don't hold it against him that he didn't come forward and say yes hey everything's going okay we're hiding this but hey we really did it you know that's just you know, human somebody nature. dies and you guys are hot dog and nah, that's not human nature 
All right, listen. Do you remember the episode? I don't remember the title, but it was the one where um, Wesley was assigned um, a, a job uh, in engineering or something, and he was having issues with yes getting the crew to um, yes the older Those crew. Who first command yes right. And again, if I'm in that crew, I'm like, really? This punks over me? Uh uh-uh. uh. Wait a minute. Now it's my job. But right. I would have prob- I'd have a problem with that. But do you remember Wesley was like uh he was talking to this one dude and he was like, I think we should use a you know, whatever hydro spanner for this job. And the guy's like, Well I think a a, a, a terraforming whatever would be better and Wesley was like, uh, well, okay. And then he spoke to Jordy, I think. And Jordy amped him up. You know, and he went back and said, "No, I wanted, I want a hydro spanner." And the guy was like, "Okay, sure, I'll have this on your desk first thing tomorrow." Wesley stood up, man. You got to give him credit for that. No, I do give him credit for that. You know, he 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 was in a position that he didn't need to be in, but he was in that position, and he held his ground, knowing again he's got backup. He's got, you know, <laughs> Commander Riker personally has said, "I will personally take care of his training, Captain." So you got the number one behind you. He's boys with Jordy. Uh, his mama's the doctor, and the captain sniffing around his mama. This is the golden child here. He's got backup. So basically, you're saying he's Baron Trump. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much, yes. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, listen. Let's um, let's look at our wait, wait, our yes. Yeah. I, I will give Wesley this. I'll give Will Wheaton this. As an actor, he knew that he was resented a lot. I'm not the only one, but he took that and developed that into his personality and uses it a lot on Big Bang Theory. And he's accepted it and he's made a big, made it really not a joke, but he's really made it humorous and turned it around to work in his favor. And I got to admire that. Now, is he a regular? He's not a regular on Big Bang. He's he's recurring. recurring. But there was this one episode where the guys were going to go see um, the new Star Wars movie. And Will Wheaton comes in dressed in Spock gear. Right. And people are pulling him. And he's like, ah, live long and suck it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Sheldon's like, you already were a major character on that show. He's all, yeah, but I'm still ahead of you. <laughs> true, true. But he, so he, I like that. He's probably, he's what, in his 30s now? 40s? Oh, yeah. Maybe early 40s. Wow. And, and from a tech standpoint, he used to be on... um. There's an old show on the old G4 network called The Screensavers. He used to be on that as himself talking tech things, and he's got a couple of tech podcasts. He's a really bright dude, and he seems. And again, I've met him at, at San Diego Con. And he seems like a really nice cat, but just that character hated it. Hated it. No, he's got to be in his late twenties or thirties because he was. I mean, next stand year, by me. Stand by. Well, no. I was when when TNG first came on. I was roughly, I don't know, tw- in my t- early twenties. I was in college, and he w- he couldn't have been more than f- a teenager, right? When TNG well, first started, he was like maybe like fourteen, fifteen. Nah, I'd say fifteen, sixteen around there. Let's find out. I'm think I'm I'm think I'm maybe six years older than him, something like that. Eight, six, six, eight, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to give him. He's, he's not in his 20s. I'm not giving him that at all. He's, he's 45. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm getting old, dude. Okay. He's got a baby face, though. That little dorky beard is he's trying to grow to make me look older. It's not helping. You know who he <laughs> reminds me of is Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. That's not a good yeah, thing. That's not a well, good Shia's thing. Well, Shia's crazy. The only good thing Shia has done recently is that, uh, that uh, clapping at the end of some weird Shia LaBeouf is crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. The, that's the best performance he's given in quite Whatever a while. happened to him? And he's been such a nice kid. Because I remember when I, I, I first saw him on Project Greenlight when they were doing the movie. And they the directors hired him and they're, you know, were watching him do the movie. And he seemed like a nice little dude. And all of a sudden, he blows up and becomes a douche. I don't know. Ever since uh, Money Never, Never Sleeps, the Wall Street sequel? Something happened to him. Oh. Anyway, I don't even want to talk about him. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next contender. And ding, that ding, is ding, ding, ding. the one and only Jake Sisko. Now, what do you got on Jake? What do, you, what do you think about Jake? You know, Jake, when they introduced this character on the very first episode, I think it was called 
emissary. Yeah. And you see him sitting out there in the holodeck, you know, fishing, talking to his dad. I'm like, oh, this is a cool little kid. <laughs> you know, this is a cool little dude. But as he got older, <laughs> you wanted to punch him. Because, you know, as he got older, he started to hang out with, with Nog. Which was which cool. Meant, which was cool, but, you know, a couple of kids. And that's doing what kids do, you know, getting in trouble. That's what I, they and I did like that aspect of him. Him and Nog sitting up there on the on the gantry. Looking yep. down, uh, no doing, doing that with Steve, Ar- doing a Steve Arrington walk, walking down the street watching ladies. <laughs> I was that was that was good. That was good writing. Good, but okay, but could, go ahead, continue. <laughs> but then they they lost me. Right after he decides to go into journalism. Yeah. Uh, now at one point though, there was one episode. I'm, I'm kind of jumping forward. There was one episode. Where some I forgot what triggered it, but his father, Cisco, got sucked up in some type of also like a time bubble. I know, yeah. And you see Jake just continue to grow old and miss his dad. And near the end of that episode, Cisco comes back and he's all, "Dude, you're you're a good son. You know this isn't your fault." And I and I, I loved that. But when when Jake decides to, when the war starts. And Benjamin's like, look, we got to give up the station. We're out of here. No, I'm going to stay, Dad. I'm a journalist. Really? You're a journalist. I'm How... a journalist. And he yeah. was an adult at that point. You know, a young adult. But he, was, he was an adult. And and uh, Cisco's like, all right, man. You're a grown man. I'm out. And then he ends up on a mission. Not a mission. Ends up observing a uh, medical run. Oh, with fear. Oh, it's on the plane. And again, this is war. And the bombs start flying, and he just adjusted his skirt and just fell on out. Oh! Oh! Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was not a good look. You know yeah. what? I can't say that anymore. So you can't say that nowadays. Because now someone's going to take what I just said as sexist. So let me rephrase. <laughs> this is not a gender thing. Hey, at this some a, there was a point a where, there, it's, there was a point where men were wearing skirts on the Enterprise, so, you know... No sexism taken there. Yeah, that's first season. <laughs> but listen, before, see, you you went from zero to sixty. <laughs> Let's step back for a sec. Now, the I think the biggest problem I have with Jake, I'm not going to say it's Jake's fault or Syrix. Is that his name? Shirak. I hope he wasn't Shirak. named. That, I hope he wasn't named after the alcohol. <laughs> I think the alcohol is named after him, actually, because <laughs> he was first. <laughs> okay. Let's call him. I'm going to call him Sirak. I don't think it was Ciroc's fault. I just think the writers did not know what to do with him. And I'm going to I'm going to say it. It's it possible that the writers just didn't know how to write a black young male? I don't think that and again this is something you and I are always going to disagree on. I don't think in this instance it was a color thing. I think you're right though. I don't think they knew what to do with him. They had so like much, what do you do with him? They had so much potential though. It was interesting to me that he decided not to follow in his son's his son his dad's footsteps and join Starfleet. That's an yeah. inter- that's an interesting dynamic. He wants to be a journalist. That's interesting too. That, so they put him in the middle of the Dominion War. And first off, you know, well, I'm going to save this point for later. I'm going to table that for now. But <clears throat> they didn't really do anything with that cuz to your point, when they got to the episode where his journalism skills should kick in and he's on that run with Bash- Bashir is it Bashir? Mm-hmm. That's Bashir. Bashir, right. He was pathetic. <laughs> it's almost like why why are you writing him this way? I could when I think of I, I think of him running looking like uh Ichabod Crane or something. Like uh, like yeah. like Jughead or something. <laughs> uh covering up his head with his shirt or something like that and screaming, Ah, ah oh God. <laughs> It was embarrassing. That was horrible. Now, I, I do respect that he stayed behind, but I was going to make this point. I think part of Jake's annoyingness, Benjamin Sisko treated him like, I guess that he, he that's what you call a, a helicopter parent. Is that what it is? You think so? Oh, my God. You think so? No, I don't, I don't agree with that. No, dude. Every episode where there's a scene between Cisco and Jake, he's hovering over him. He's hugging him. He's kissing him. 
He's holding his hand. He's he, he I, I can't think of the word, but it's just he was he completely spoiled that kid. He was it was almost like unnatural. I've seen on some um chat rooms where they're like, Is it just me or is Ben's relationship with his son Jake a little creepy? And I'm nah. like Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I, I disagree vehemently on that one. You know, when this, and again I thought you I thought you of all people would have gone the other other way with this because you have a single black father, you know, showing affection and love to his son. Right. You know, he wants to be a part of his life, you know, and he wants his son to know that look, no matter what I'm doing, you're the center here, man. You're my guy. I got How it. How is that a bad thing? <clears throat> I didn't say that was a bad thing. What you described was not a bad thing. What I'm talking about is, dude, let Jake breathe. You don't have to be up in this grill all the time. Well, Jake, I chartered a sail ship, and we're going to go sailing. Dad, do I have to go? Well, you don't want to go, Jake. Well, Why you got a fire on, on, on Cisco, man? <laughs> you don't want to go, Jake? Well, Dad, I... And then Jake turns and okay, Dad, I'll go, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, know, you remember the episode I'm talking about? I, I, I he didn't want to go. I mean, Jake is getting to be a young man. And, and, and much, <laughs> this is another point I wanted to make. I thought the writers, for Jake, I know he's, a, he's, a, he's an adult, but he still has that baby face. I thought they put him in some weirdly kind of borderline sexual weird positions like he, uh, he, he falls in love with a dabo girl yeah but she was fine i'm not denying she wasn't fine <laughs> she was fine but that seems a little creepy to put this young kid in a relationship with a dabo girl well when he was you know stepping to the dabo girl he was a little bit older okay he was a little bit older and she was not an older woman either but, not that let me rephrase that she wasn't like Full on old like uh, the rest of the Dabo girls. No, it would be like an eighteen year old uh, going out with a Vegas showgirl. Does that seem appropriate? Yeah, that, no, that that I will give you that. And and Benjamin's like, hey man, you sure about this? And he stepped back and let Jake figure it out for himself. Now I forget. He didn't did, intervene in that. Did they? They broke up eventually, right? Oh yeah, she had to go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the other, there was the one episode I was really uncomfortable. I think it was called Muse, where he's writing a book and there's some alien female yes. presence. Yes. And she's like, she, he's laying back on her chest and she's stroking his head. And yeah, he, but she had put the whammy on him though, so you can't really but it looked, fault it, him for that. It looked creepy. That's all, He looks too young for these. It was supposed to look creepy. Ah, I, okay. To show that she's not a good person here. If I'm the director of that episode, I'm like, Sirach, this isn't right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that one episode, I can't remember the name of it, that featured Tony Todd, who played, who also is the actor who played, uh, I believe that's the actor who played Worf's brother, Moog. Yes. No, not Moog. Kern. 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 I always get yeah. that confused. That was a standout episode for uh, for Jake. But that episode where he is on that run with Bashir, for me, that that really sinks it. So I'm going with Jake is the most annoying. Now, is that fair? I'm, I'm trying to... I, let me say this. I don't really think either of them are worthy of any hate. Okay? I like them both. But that scene, that episode where he's running around on the beach and he leaves Bashir behind, dude... Wesley never did anything like that. You know, I, I got to go with Wesley because Wesley really, for all the things that me and other viewers hate about him, he never really got a chance to redeem himself. Wesley didn't? You know, No, he didn't. He went out of the show wrong. You know, at Journey's End, that was his last... No, until, um, until Nemesis, I'm glad you reminded me of that. But as far as on the actual show, he went out wrong, man. You had the thing at, at with Nova Squad at the Academy. Then he comes back, puts Worf in the jackpot, and let's just call it an international incident that he could have triggered just by his, you know, interfering. 
No. No. Well, see. and then he's all, "I'm leaving. I'm quitting Starfleet. You need to quit because you ain't want us, man." And you know, actually, you bring up a good point. I never thought of that. That we never saw Beverly express any kind of grief or. None. Beverly, Beverly never evinced any consequences of that. Now, the None. other thing is, I brought up Nemesis, and you just referenced it again. We do see Wesley in a quick shot during the wedding scene of Riker and Troy. but And we talked about this uh, in a previous show. Because of Stuart Baird's re- incompetence, um, yeah. he didn't even know Wesley existed. It was uh, LaForge. Uh, LaForge. It was uh, LeVar Burton who uh, told Baird that Wesley should be in the movie. And apparently there's a larger scene with Wesley in the wedding scene, but it was cut out. But you brought up on that show a very good point. When did Wesley get back into Starfleet? (laughs) That he would have been in uniform at that wedding. Exactly. That's a story that needs to be told. Now, I forget where I got my source from this, but as I mentioned earlier in this show, Wesley does return to Starfleet, and he's posted on uh, Riker's ship, the Titan. Yeah. I think he works in engineering the night shift. So, one I mean, one would imagine by now he's probably risen up the ranks. But, um, yeah, you're right. He never does really get his kind of, uh, his, uh, what it, the, the, the final arc, or the, the, the resolution that one would hope, other than just seeing them in the in the corner of the frame in Nemesis. So, well, but let me ask you. So, who do you got? Who's the most? Who's more annoying for you? I gotta go with Wesley. Really? Because this... because Jake only had that really one instance of just wanting to strangle him. Yeah. And other than that, it's like you said. It really more. It isn't really much or as much about hating Jake. It's the writers didn't do anything with him. Whereas with Wesley. They try to do things with him, and he just they just make him a little rat bastard. Wow. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there is one other episode. To be fair, there is one other episode where I wanted to just beat Wesley's ass. <laughs> uh, I think it was... It, it just hit... It was, he didn't do anything on purpose, but it's just... Damn, dude, you always f***ing up, man. <laughs> it was the one... Was it called... Um, was the episode called Justice... Where they go on this one planet and he's playing with some yep. of the alien children. Yep. And he uh, and he ran into the flowers. He yep. ran into the flowers. And they're like, Okay, we're gonna kill his ass. It's like, you got to go now. Sorry. <laughs> no, I can't do it for you, man. You got to go. And so how did they get out of that? Do you remember? They would have had uh, to have broken the prime directive. Yes, which you can't do. Wesley's got to go. How did they do this? I think you know, I don't want to talk out of term. Thinking though, somehow they convinced the upper power structure of that planet to give him a pass, which is bullshit. Okay, he should have he should have paid for it. Like my boy was a kid, God, about twenty years ago in Singapore, went over there f-ing up, and they put the cane on his ass. Well, is it, well, let, let me stop you there. Same thing. Same There's thing. a big difference between being caned and being killed. <laughs> same same premise applies. You are on our property, on our land. You need to respect our laws. I don't know them. And you better get familiar. Well, see, now, I put that on Starfleet. I put that on Picard. He let these knuckleheads run around. Then again, you know, I don't know. No, but, I'm, I'm, look, Zach, let's back up even further. Why was he on the away team? I hate dude, it. No, wait a minute. Damn. He to beat the away team. Listen, they found a planet. They had some shore leave. Well, it wasn't. I don't think it was an away team situation. It was. I mean, the Phil first. Shirley, I don't. Should have told him. Say what now? Phil surely they should have been told. Look, don't f- around the plants. <laughs> don't f- listen. <laughs> I'm not going to. You, I'm not going to set foot. It's the same thing. Like you, I probably shouldn't bring this up, but that that guy that went to North Korea and came back in a, a coma, warm beer. Yep. I think his name was. Yeah. I'm not going there. And I'm not going to a planet where if I know if I step on some flowers, I'm gonna get killed. I'm a, I don't know what the fuck else I might screw up. So I'm not even no. I'm, I'm not even, exactly. I'm not even going. I'm good player. Exactly. Now really? I'm looking up the the Justice episode 
how he got out of it, Picard successfully argued that the sentence was unjust and laws with no leeway or exceptions was an un- injustice in itself. The entities accepted the argument and let him let him take off. So in other words, he got away with one. Wait a minute. How did he? What was you? Now you're uh, you're an attorney in real life. Read that back to me and tell me if that makes any sense. It doesn't. You know the Edo, the people at that planet. Right. You know they tried to beam Wesley. You know the Enterprise tried to beam Wesley out of there, but their god was preventing it. However, Picard successfully argued that the sentence was unjust and laws with no leeway or exceptions is an injustice in and of itself. And the entities, the gods, accepted that argument and let them beam him out. Now, is that... So, in other words, they're saying that the Edo had a totalitarian state with no room for flexibility or gray area, which I can understand from a, you know, abstract standpoint, but it's still Crusher and I hate him and he got away with it. Because everybody else on that planet is like, wait a minute, had that been us, we'd have got dusted. Uh-uh. No, well, hell no. Well... You know the writers created that whole. I mean, they created that out of their out of their imagination. I don't know where they came up with that. Let's write this as Picard's legal defense because that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, works. if you live in a totalitarian state, your laws are totalitarian. Now, if you have an uprising and you change the laws, yeah, but you can't say that a, a law that has no what was it? What's the, the, the language? Has no flexibility. It's not a law. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a just law. It is it is unjust law because it has because it has no flexibility. But again, I've prosecuted and defended many misdemeanors and felonies, and laws the law, man. Yeah. And again, had they given him like a lesser punishment, I'd have been okay with that. But they just let him bounce. Nah, man. Oh, that's nah. happened. But that's happened a lot of times in Star Trek. I I can't really point to anything specific, but I know I've seen a lot of episodes where Starfleet crew has gotten off. I, I know. I, as a matter of fact, Harry. Something happened with Harry. Oh yeah, wasn't he? He was forced to relive. Oh no, it was. Was it Tom Paris? He had an affair was, with was Paris. He had an affair with someone's wife. Yeah, Paris. And he was. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Harry. Uh, Harry ain't got no skills. Harry was good at them holodeck babes, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and I don't mean anything when I say babes. I'm just. I, I know. I am. Got to be careful nowadays. I, I hate Matt Lauer too. I hate him just as much as I, okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, it, he he was forced to relive the uh, memory of of the wife being killed, I believe, and somehow they got him off of that, right? Yep. But he was convicted unjustly, though, on that one. I believe. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. Well, you know, all they had to do was look. Let me get some of the DNA from those flowers. We're gonna replicate you some flowers. Damn. All right, we done. Are we done here? They should have made him do something. All right? He just got away with You know what they should have done? And it would have made for uh, probably a better episode. They should have had um, Picard get on his Cisco. Like Cisco, the Cisco in that one episode where he's like, yeah, I did it. (laughs) Sipping his champagne. (laughs) (laughs) They should have had Picard uh, effect some sort of escape, like a, a, a... Raid on Entebbe, some type of escape where they break Wesley out. And that could have been no, Picard's. No, no. That could have been Picard's, like, f- it episode. <laughs> that would have been bad because that same thing happened in Voyager. Oh, what was that ship? Remember, there was a ship that was also out there in the middle of nowhere. The Equinox. They, the Equinox? Equinox. The Equinox. Same thing. That's what happened. Equinox did. They're like, you know what? We don't do this. And bounce. And look what happened. Them aliens like, no, nah, we're going to find your asses and deal with you. <laughs> they didn't let that one slide. All those aliens reminded me of Slimer from Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, here's the other thing they could have done. They, to your point, they could have had it where uh, Wesley has to do a year or, or six months or something like that. Six months time. And they they like, look, Wesley, we got to bounce, man. We're going we gonna to be you in our prayers for six months. <laughs> Exactly. And we Beverly, got you, dog, but you got to stay, stay here. Yeah. Beverly's like, but Captain, Beverly, sit your ass down. <laughs> stay out of this, baby. Stay I'm right. not. I'm not trying to get caught up in that mess. And then they come right. back, and you, you know, you, you could do a sequel to that episode. You know. You know, you can't risk your ship for someone's 
actions that were wrong. I'm not saying it was intentional, but he's wrong here. They could have so, had, they could have had Beverly stay behind, and then they could have brought Pulaski back. Pulaski, yeah, yeah. Or okay with that. they could have introduced the EMH. Picard could have gone back to the near star base and said, because of our you know prime directive, I had to leave. Uh, Wesley Crusher behind, and you can understand Admiral who, Admiral Necheyev, whoever, that uh, his mother, my uh, medical officer, wanted to stay behind. We need we we are down without a doctor, and that's when they could have broken out this a rudimentary EMH, right? That'll work for me. Of course, they weren't thinking about that. They they don't think of they don't think this far in advance, like what ten years in advance. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, more like seventeen years when Voyager came on it, but um. You know what? You make a compelling argument. But the thing is, I don't. I never found Wesley annoying. I yeah. only, only so in so far as I found any other character having occasional annoying days, and I include Picard as well. So I don't really find him annoying. And with Jake, I, I, I think Jake, you're right. The the biggest thing was he just never he didn't he didn't have any conviction with it. He didn't have any like. I just didn't get a sense of what he stood for. You know what I mean? Um, because as a journalist, although he was willing to stay behind on DS9, and I know Benjamin wouldn't, the Benjamin, the fawning helicopter parent Benjamin is, that was unrealistic. But he did he did have the conviction to stay behind. But ah, I just didn't, they, the writers didn't know what to do with him. So by I just got to go with, even though he's a brother. <laughs> Wow. I got to say Jake was the more annoying. And it's not wow. all Jake's it's not all Jake's fault. Just like many of the brothers that I know, it's not their fault. A lot of the t- <laughs> it's, all, it's not all Jeez. their fault. <laughs> Send your email to QStorm. <laughs> it's not all their fault. <laughs> but uh yeah, I got to give Jake the L. But you're going with Wesley, huh? I'm going with Wesley for a bigger body of just annoyance. See, now what we got to do is we got to get Craig J to watch a couple of. We need to give him two episodes. One, one of our most annoying Wesley episodes. I guess that would be Journey's End, right? Oh yeah. And then we got to give him that episode where Jake was acting like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for this episode. <laughs> I can yeah, feel you it. are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, but Crusher was just so annoying. That scene in engineering alone does him in. Oh, we're doing this to eat two people. And eat shit. Ugh. I gotta man, watch. Get, get, get out of my engineering, man. Get the hell out of here. I gotta watch that again. All right, so we we've kind of litigated Jake and Wesley. Now, if we throw Naomi, if we throw Ichab, Charlie X. Who else do we got? If we throw any other adolescent characters into the mix. Who is there anyone else we should consider that may be even more annoying than Jake or Wesley? Well, the auto, the automatic uh, choice is going to be Nog because he was a youngster, but and he had a good arc though. He See, did. he got redemption. He got redemption. Well, hey, Nog was so, Nog was putting it in. And there was an episode where um he was a part of Red Squad. Yep, <clears throat> and he had this bootleg captain. Who thought he was the shit. And I think, am I correct? They ended up on a space station where Garrett got turned against them. Remember that? Yep, I remember that one. Oh, yeah. Nog put in some work, man. <laughs> no, Nog handled business. Yeah, when he decided to be, you know, to go for the academy, he went to Cisco. And Cisco's like, why would I back your punk ass? Show me what's up. And Nog showed him what he was about, and he got the shot. He earned it. Wesley Crusher, <laughs> Nog earned it. Listen, listen, Big Sexy. I'm just gonna say this one last time. Well, let me back up. Uh, uh, Wesley was has, was on TNG from episode one, wasn't he? If it, it wasn't one, it was two. Yeah. Because you kept saying that you don't you don't like it when they bring on a, a young character, uh, and which what, what I infer. You know what? You're right. You're right. Yeah. He was there from day one. Right. I still hate him though. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying is. I mean, Wesley was there from day one, which means that Beverly brought and and you can we can argue this, maybe it's for another show, the logic of having a starship that is made for families. Now I know you go on these five year missions and you want your family with you, 
But, you know, you might have to handle business every now and then. Yeah. So, so oh, it's, yeah. it's not Crusher, it's not Wesley's fault that his mother brought him on the ship. And no, it, it is. And Wesley's like, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. That I, that I oh. got it like that, that I can, you know, jump over the ranks. <laughs> no, don't hate me because I'm beautiful and because I got much backup. Hey, man. That's how life is. Wesley was balling with his. He was balling with his. He wasn't balling for shit. He got away, man. Wow, wow. So, all right. Well, so we have a tie. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you, we're going to need you to break the tie. And if you need some refresher material, we're going to suggest go watch Journey's End with Wesley. You want to kill him. That's a negative. Now, a positive episode, and I don't remember the name of the episode, was the one. I'm going to, well, you know, I'm going to say Remember Me. Because Wesley showed how committed he was to getting his mom back. We learned that he has metahuman abilities. So check that episode out. And for Jake, you know, Big Sexy, do you know the name of that episode we keep referring to? I'm looking at it now. I think it was called A Time to Stand. That's what it was. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Okay, cool. Wait, 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 wait. Nope. Mean, meanwhile, on Terok Nord, Jake wants to interview, blah, 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 occupation, blah, 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 departure, yada, yada, yada. All right, we'll put it in the notes. <laughs> we'll put it in the notes. We'll put it in the notes. We'll put it in the notes. Oh, the episode is called Nor the Battle to the Strong. That's it. Nor, N-O-R, right? It's battle Nor to the Strong. To the Strong. What an Episode time. four, season five. Okay. Now, can you think of a positive Jake storyline? Because we want, you know, we want to give him um, a balance here. Oh, gosh, they didn't get much to do. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly my point. There was one where and I think the Kai douche had done something to get the Pa Wraith running around. And this is before uh, Gul Dukat let him loose. But one grabbed Kira uh-huh. and the other one grabbed Jake. And they were on the, on the uh, promenade about to throw down. I think I remember this, yeah. And Cisco's like, not with my son, you don't. And I forgot how that resolved. Yeah, but that's... Cisco stepped in and said, no, y'all ain't going to do this today. Yeah, there's that helicopter parent. See? Exactly. Don't him look it! <laughs> ben, let the, do- let the guy experience some things, for God's sake. He's 12. Oh, whatever, however old he was. <laughs> no! Yeah, he's 12, and you got him on a space station at the edge of a wormhole. It's gonna happen. <laughs> if he was a helicopter, who's a better parent, him or uh, Beverly Crusher? She sucked. I, I, yeah, thank you. I, I no, I, I, I have an answer. I'm just gonna get my car pulled. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go I, ahead just, I, just, I just think Cisco was too um, smothering. He was too, too hands on. He needed to be hands on because his wife Jennifer was, and she was fine, and she was killed. Yeah. By the way, the mirror version was fine. The the one, Ooh, yes. the one he was messing with, the real one. Eh. <laughs> I'm good either way. I'm good either way. We could have figured it out. So <clears throat> we only have a few minutes remaining. Um, you know, but let's 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 talk about some discovery a little bit. What are you watching to get over your discovery withdrawal? Orville. Oh, d- listen. I don't know why you hate that show, man. It's it's good. If I can, have you watched it? Have you watched it since the first two episodes? If I can reach back there and, and grab the knife, <laughs> I'll pull it out, causing more damage to my internal organs. Wipe off the blood and hand it back to you. No, I'm not watching the Orville. It's, it's not. It's not bad, man. It, it scratches that itch. They've taken a lot of the comedy out, and it's really, you know, a Star Trek show. It really is. Is is Seth MacFarlane still trying to? He's not trying to be funny. You're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, I'm going with uh, Jake is most annoying by default. And you were wrong. Big sexy is going with Wesley. We want to hear what you think. I think I know what where it's going to go. At any rate, we want to leave it up to you. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before oh, we get, get what into we that, got? what you got for going me? Going back to Discovery. Yeah. You know, can we think about it? I'm going to miss my girl on Discovery. The the woman who played the Admiral. That's my girl. Cornwall. That's, yes. Why? That's why my. She, why is she your girl? I, she, every time I've seen her in things, you know, I've seen her in like episodes of Grey's Anatomy or Sports Talk when that was on back in the day. 
I'm like, that's my girl. That little crooked smile of hers, I'm like, yep. Oh, that's oh her. man, crooked smile. <laughs> but it's cute. It's cute. So I'm going to miss her. You know what, Nessie? Now you got me thinking. I was watching, like I think I said, I, I put uh, DS9 on hold. I'll just I'll just tell you why. You know why I put it on hold? Because I had bought the entire box set series of the Jeffersons. <laughs> Lord. And I went through all eleven seasons. <laughs> it ran eleven seasons. That that joint ran eleven seasons. Wow. It was, it was longer than um, All in the Family. From which it spun off of, Ooh. and at the end there, it got re- it, it got really stupid. Like around season five, it was a it was a slow tumble off the cliff. But anyway, I digress. So I'm watching DS9 again. Although I do have the box set of Three's Company that I have to go through, but I want to I want to go through I want to go through DS9 first. And um, I found her character to be very interesting, and she. She kicked some ass in, in the last episode. She, her legs weren't working. She was like, she was putting some work in on them Klingons. And she was like, soldier, wake up, wake up. And so I, I do, you know, talking about Ash, who was in his little funk. But I, I like her as well. She she grew on me in that last episode. And I know if if our uh, previous guest host is listening, I'm going to catch it. Um, Ms. Defet C, who graced us with her presence. She wasn't happy that Captain Lorca seduced Cornwell in the uh, previous episode, uh, the Letha episode, right? Yeah. And I'm like, Captain Lorca had it like that. What do you, you know? <laughs> he had it like that. You know, and the thing is, that dynamic is really set up, if you look at it, with Picard and Admiral, Admiral Nechev. Because he could have pulled that, but he just didn't. But he never. Oh, that, oh, that's a big. Wow, that's a huge implication right there. He could have pulled that because she was always coming to him. I'm the admiral. And I'm coming to the captain. I don't think so. You come to me. I'm the admiral player. She was. You cute. come find me. She was cute in a kind of. Um, what, what? Who was the uh, the Olympian? The uh, door, uh, ah, Mary Lou Retton kind of way. Yeah. Is that, was yeah. that her name? That was her. Yeah. Or uh, the now, woman, the woman who played Peter Pan. I can't think of her Kathy name. Kathy Rigby. Kathy Rigby, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I've pulled up Journey's End on my desktop. Nine minutes in. Yeah. And it's muted right now. You can just see Wesley's body language when, you know, Jordy's showing him the new doohickey. Oh, this is so much better. Oh. And Jordy's like, man, get the f*** out of my engineering. <laughs> you just want to slug him. He's so dismissive. You just want to punch him in his face. And maybe that's the point. He he has evolved. He that that was the writers that was their plot device for saying for setting Wesley up to be able to quote unquote betray the Federation. And the thing is, since he did you know betray and then put Worf in the jackpot and then quit, he's back in Starfleet. No hell no, not on my watch. If I'm in Starfleet, I got a problem. Well, hey, all I can say is maybe Wolf 359 did away with so many of their officers, they'll take anybody. Well, maybe. Because, well, they'll take this guy? Ugh. Well, he is pretty brilliant, Big Sexy. Remember, he's smart. That's so. fine. Leave him somewhere and let him be a research dude. He don't need to be on the bridge. He He's in engineering. Engineering. Yeah, got... And you know what? He's wait, a... wait, he's not engineering. He's red. He's got a command level uniform. No, no, no. He used to be in engineering, though. You're right. When when he comes back, like I, like we already said. What a he, nemesis! Yeah, he's in engineering, on the Titan, okay. on the Titan. Okay, stand corrected. That's where he's. And see again, he's whose ship is he on? Riker. Right. Riker pulled some hooks. Hey, come hang with me, pal. <laughs> him. I hate him. Hey man, there's a there's a pecking order. I know it's not fair, but life isn't fair. Anyway, on that Dang. note. <laughs> What do you, uh, what do you all think? Okay, again, I'm going with Jake is most annoying. He's going with Wesley. At any rate, we want the listeners to decide because we have a tie here. Who's the most annoying, Jake or Wesley? Now you know where we stand. We want to know where you stand. So all you need to do, go to iTunes, subscribe, download us. You can find us at the Red Shirts of Star Trek podcast. Go to Tumblr. Uh, look, look for us under Red Shirts of Star Trek podcast. Go to Twitter, 
at redshirt 1701 let, let us know what you think and go to youtube we'll put up a um a youtube version of this podcast and you can leave your comments there we really want to know what you think i think wesley gets a bad rap and i do love jake but i want to know what you think and we'll put all of wesley these... is a punk <sighs> you're not gonna let it go are you no <laughs> And, and listen, listen. If you guys think of can think of any other people that we should have considered, you know, uh, we we uh, big sexy brought up Alexander at the last minute, a worthy contender for most yeah, annoying. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. So if you got anyone else on on your mind, please let us know. We'll consider it. But each app makes a strong play though for not being in so many episodes. Couldn't stand him. <laughs> I had no problem. I thought each year was a man. I think he could have pulled. He could have pulled seven. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. I'm gonna rescind that. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I need to take a shower after saying that. I'm, I apologize. Oh, I man. need to take. I need to Harry would have had to pull him aside. Play it. No, you're not ready for that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next time. Peace. Eat him. I hate that guy. Did, let me pick up. This, I'm, 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 my head's starting to get cloudy. Hold on. This is a pickup. Well, all right. Whatever you say, man. Any, any, any yeah. Pick up. <laughs> yeah, I forgot, but I, I forgot my train of thought. What were we talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> ah, the blooper reel is going to be crowded on this one. Red Shirts is not endorsed by Paramount Pictures, Viacom, or CBS. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Star Trek, the Star Trek logo, and all names, pictures, and audio of Star Trek characters are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and or copyright holders.